partner. So I'm super interested as to you being a brother, you know, how do they treat you there in China? Brother, uh, are you accepted there? What's the experience of a black man in China working there in 2023? Mm -hmm. Man, okay, 2023. Well, I would say, do they accept us? Uh, that's a big no, <laughs> they don't accept us. Uh, but, you know, a lot of us are still living here and doing our thing despite that. So uh, I meet a lot of brothers out here, actually, from Africa, from all over, but mostly from Africa, uh, who are here either studying, doing their thing. And, you know, they, they have a lot of challenges here. We have a lot of challenges here. I mean, it, it would depend on where you're from. So if you're from, you know, the continent, you will face a few more challenges than, say, me or, or yourself, if you're from a Western country. But um, in general, you know, we are kind of starting off on the back foot over here. We can still be successful regardless, but we do have a few more challenges as compared to, you know, white Western men or, you know, people with lighter complexion. So I just got to be honest about that. So, so uh, tell us more about the challenges, bro, uh, as a brother in China in 2023. What kind of challenges do you face? Well, now that the borders have opened up, um, you see a lot of employers now who are being more vocal about hiring white people or hiring uh, lighter skinned people, European specifically, right? So that's one thing that I know brothers are having to navigate or just black people in general have to navigate the whole workplace discrimination. That's, that's very much a real thing. It was very real years before and it's real now. During the pandemic, they kind of chilled out a little bit on that because they not... It was harder to come into China during the pandemic. So they kind of relaxed on that stuff. But now that borders are opened up, I mean, that's one thing brothers have to deal with now. It's just the workplace discrimination and just the, the job hiring practices here. One thing. Uh, another thing that I noticed some brothers had to, had to put up with here, and I think foreigners in general, is if they want to open up a business, there's a lot of hoops they have to jump through. So I know one brother in particular who was trying to get his business off the ground here. And you know they just flat out denied him um, just for a really off the cuff reason. You know, So he had to start like an online business thing with Ghana. He's from Ghana originally. So he sells clothes online um, back to Ghana or something like that. But he had to jump through hoops to, to kind of do some of the stuff that he's doing now. Uh, so yeah, just, just in terms of starting businesses here and, and finding a job, finding work, on top of just the, the average being a foreigner in China issues, those are some of the things that brothers have to deal with, just the open, blatant discrimination. Wow. Mm. What, what you're telling me here, I guarantee you, the Chinese man is not experiencing that in Africa. And this is why I get angry every single day. Yep. People all around the world will mistreat uh, black people, but in our yep. homelands, they get royalty treatment. This is why I'm yeah. angry every single day. Hearing this, bro, I'm not happy about that at all. You, you should mm -hmm. not be going through this at all in any country in the entire world. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell me more about... So you're currently working as an English teacher in China, right? Yeah. Do you personally experience workplace discrimination, brother? Would you say you are denied promotions because of your skin color? You're called slurs, people people treat you differently, look at you differently uh, amongst your colleagues. Can you break down what you're going through, brother? Yeah, I can break that part down. Yeah, a lot actually. So yeah, I, I teach English here, but I'm a manager, you know? So as a manager, I see a few more things and I have to deal with a little bit more stuff than the average teacher. Um, so when it comes to like interviews, for example, we're dealing with, dealing with teachers as a manager. There was one incident to where we had to hire a local teacher, right? And we got a recommendation from some of the higher ups like, hey, yeah, she's a great teacher. You guys should hire her and everything. So me and the other manager, we did the interview with her and she was great. You know, she really sold herself in, in, in the interview and all that stuff. I mean, it was a dead shoe in for her. So we accepted her to come on board. But I kid you not, maybe two or three days after we hired her, she was interacting with all the other teachers on campus, just you know, getting getting to know everyone. And she had all of these racist and, and, and bigoted views about black people, about all this stuff. Um, and she would say things like, oh, you guys have black people working here? <laughs> yeah, you need what? to pay me more. Yeah. 
Well, so, wait, so, 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 so yeah, you, you, need, you need to pay me more because the black people are working in the, uh, in, in the same yeah. school as you. Yeah, what? she 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 messes some of the higher ups like, hey, yeah, yeah, they got black people working here. Yeah, you guys definitely need to pay me more. You know, same stuff like that. You know, this is stuff that I heard from the other manager, and I don't doubt it for a second. So she was saying stuff like that. Yeah, you got black people working here. A lot of these guys, they're not native speakers. You know, because we had teachers from um, from Jamaica and, and South African stuff. So she would say stuff like, oh yeah, my English is way better than theirs, and. Yeah, they're not even native speakers and blah 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 and you know all this stuff so needless to say when i heard about all this stuff i was like oh, yeah i'm gonna have a yeah i'm gonna have to talk to her right so the other manager and i we set up another discussion with her to figure out what was going on why she's saying all this crazy stuff and you know me i'm pretty chill when it comes to most things but when it comes to the whole racial dynamic stuff like i don't you know i don't show anybody any quarter with that so when it came to the came to the discussion, I just kind of laid into her like, hey, look, you know, it's one thing to say that you want to be paid more because of your skill set, because of your knowledge, your expertise, right? But there's a, it's another thing to say, oh yeah, pay me more because I'm not something. Pay me more because I'm not black. Like who does that? You can't go to any professional or, or job and say, yeah, give me more money because I'm not something. Like nobody does that, you know? So like, before we even got into the racial thing, like I just broke it down to her like that. Like what you're saying just doesn't make any sense, let alone the racial component, you know? And IP, dude, man, she shot me daggers. <laughs> she was looking at me with so much hatred in her eyes. <laughs> man, yeah, yeah. So in terms of the racial thing, there was that. Hold on, before, before we go any further to the next point, brother, what kind of yeah. white was she? British white, Australian white, American white? Oh, no, she, was, no, she, she wasn't white. She, she, was, uh, she was Chinese. She was local. What? Chinese. Yeah, she was Chinese. <laughs> oh, my goodness, bruv. Are you, are you yeah. kidding me? How, how did she yeah. get those thoughts about black people, bro? In China? I, she ain't she, she, she never met a black person before. What's going she on? Got them, I, she got them through osmosis. And she's one of these, these, these locals who, like, she spent... I think 14 years in Australia. So she, she had lived abroad before, you know, she's not a stranger to being, to going abroad. She's been abroad. So she, she knows about the world outside of China and still she will still come back and have these, these, these ideas and opinions. Right. So yeah, that, that, that was just one situ situation that I've seen occur. And before you go into the next situation, Baba, what she dealt with, what she dealt with, brother, or was she still at the job? <laughs> she's still here and you know what i had tried to get her up out of here you know and that's when i realized like my authority as a manager here like i'm just a small cog in this whole machine so like right after that incident i messaged my higher ups and be like hey look we need to get this girl out of here like i don't want anybody like her working here and i told her that in the in the, in the discussion that we had i'm like look if you have these sort of opinions about black people about these people that work here, I don't want someone like you working here. And I told her that verbatim. I do not want someone like you here, right? And that's what I said to my higher ups. Like, look, I don't want someone that's going to be working here who has who has these opinions. I just don't, you know. And they're like, you know, yeah, yeah, but you know, we got to do this, and you know, you just hired her, blah blah blah. And you know, lo and behold, she's still here. She's still here. So that's when I that's when I realized, like, I can't just fire somebody off the spot. Like, it has to go through a chain of command, you know? Like, just because I make the decision to to, to transfer somebody or to fire someone doesn't mean that they're going to say yes or agree to it. So, you know, she's still here, man. She's and, still and, here. And this, and, and, and this was you telling Chinese high-ups. Yep. Flip. Chinese and, and, and foreign higher-ups. Yeah. Chinese what, and foreign higher-ups. What, what race were these foreign higher-ups? Uh, yeah, she's she's white European. She's Scotland, and then yeah, locals. So yeah, brother, like, so this 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 is these are the kind of people in China that are working these jobs that have thoughts about black people like that. I'm sickened by that, bro. Dude, that's the kind of people that can ruin your life, ruin your career because they hate you because of your skin color. This is just disgusting, bro. But the thing about is that they're not going to be like in your face about it this is stuff that i heard the other manager the other manager tell me and my other manager at the time she was white you know she, she was from england but the good thing about her is that she would tell me all the stuff that's going on you know 
And I think because of her skin color, the fact that she's white, the the teacher that we hired, the local teacher that we hired, the, um, the, the or the Chinese teacher, right? She was more comfortable opening up to her and, and telling her these things be, because she was white. That's my conjecture. So she would tell her these things because she was white, because she feels like, you know, she might agree with some of her thoughts and opinions, <laughs> but little did she know, uh, she did not. So that, that manager, the white manager, she came and told me this stuff. Like, I can't believe what this chick is telling me, <laughs> you know? So yeah, yeah, this stuff happens, man. It happens. Wow. Oh my goodness, bruv. This, this is, and that's what we call institutional racism. That, that's 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 a that's a good example of institutional racism yeah. in china i mean black people have never evaded china we, we have never oppressed any chinese person we, we were not responsible for the hong kong wars or the or or, or the opium wars we never yeah. did any of the uh the was it the war of nanking that, that, that the japanese did against them during world war ii we had never mm -hmm. done nothing to them and they hate us more than anything on planet earth it's so flipping weird bro Break it, tell us wrong. another okay break it down for us Papa. break it down so tell us another okay. issue so this is just dealing with the school aspect right um there was another time a few years ago i was doing a halloween event and i like the students were having an activity and so i came up with this little this you know little easy solution or whatever to have them kind of wash their hands after the activity was done i forgot exactly what they were doing but i had i had done something to where like i wanted them all to wash their hands before they left the classroom. You know, um, I came up with a, little, with a little system like that just to make things more organized for myself. And then one of the the locals at the time, she had she saw me doing that, and then she was like, "Oh, Dom, you're so smart. You're really smart." <laughs> you know, she was like, "Yeah, you're really smart." And she said it in a way that's not like, "Oh, wow, you know, you're, you're so intelligent." She said it in a way like, "Oh, wow, you're actually smart." I thought you were dumb. Like, that's the way that I took it, you know? She had kind of given, given me like kind of a backhand compliment like that. You're really smart. And I'm like, okay, yeah, uh, <laughs> that seemed kind of weird, you know? And it will be like other passive aggressive stuff. Like maybe there will be an event taking place outside of the, the school, right? it will be like a musical event. And then one of my coworkers would be like, oh yeah, Dom, you should go down and rap with them. <laughs> You should go down and, and, and start rapping. I'm like, uh, yeah, I, I can't, I can't rap. <laughs> you know, or like they say some stuff like, uh, oh yeah, you know, basketball, you know, whatever, like whatever stereotype that comes through their mind. You know, it's like no filter here. Or it's like uh, you would have the, the 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 people here or the parents be calling you chocolate man and all all sorts of stuff, and like you have to kind of stop them. And say, hey, look, you know, don't don't call me that. You know, you, you need to call me by my name, etc. So there's a lot of passive aggressive stuff that happens here. Passive aggressive stuff that you probably won't catch if you don't speak some of the language, you know. But um, yeah, that's the type of stuff that, that that goes down at schools here. On top of just like even worse cases, I've heard of cases of teachers not getting any classes because they're black. You know what? Uh, yeah. So. Fortunately, at my campus, that hasn't been the case. And actually, I became one of the more popular teachers here, you know, despite my skin color. But at maybe some campuses close by here, some other schools, I've heard of teachers not getting any classes because they are black. You know, and it's mostly like a lot of black women. I would see them there and their schedules would be very light because none of the parents wanted to have class classes with, with, with her or with them because uh, yeah, they're black. So it's not uncommon here, man. I, I, I hear stuff like this all the time, all the time. So brother, uh, so I'm assuming brother, right? There's there's a, actually no, uh, do you have any more, any more workplace stories you wanna tell us about when it comes to that kind of racism if I go into my next part of the question? Yeah, yeah, actually at our campus, we had a few black female teachers working here and there was a an incident to where they wouldn't let one of the female teachers do any demos. Like they wouldn't let her teach classes or nothing like that. Like sometimes we have these little demo things that we do to, to attract new 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 students, and they wouldn't let her do any of them on the basis or on the premise of, oh yeah, the children will be scared of her. 
the children will be scared of her. So we can't let her do any demos, you know? The children will be scared of her because she's black, she's dark, you know, she's black, whatever. So I, I heard this and as a manager, you know, I kind of confront the people doing the, um, saying this stuff. And I'm like, hey, look, you know, I heard that you guys aren't letting her do demos because she's black. Like, what is this? And automatically they start trying to save face. It's not like that. Oh, we didn't say that because she's black. You know, it's not like that. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'll go talk to them. I'll, I'll go tell them to, to, to not say those things anymore. And, you know, uh, they just have an old mindset, you know, just kind of cop and please. Right. But you know, stuff like that happens, man. And they're, they're not going to fess up to it. They're just not. It's really passive aggressive. No one's going to fess up to anything. They're not going to be in your face about it, but you know what happens. You see it happening. Uh, every black person that you meet has, has some experience like this. I mean, we're not making this stuff up. You know, it happens here. Oh, wow. Um, okay. So, brother, right? Colorism. Um, I, I'm assuming colorism is rife there and the white worship there is off the chain in China. So, yeah. I'm guessing the lighter you are, the better you, you are treated in China. So, if you're a light-skinned black man, if you're a white man, they will treat you a lot better than a dark-skinned black person. Is that true? For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I've known a few white guys here, white Americans, when I first came here. And, you know, they would, they would talk to me about Tinder and that whole thing. And some of them would even kind of like show me the messages that they would get. And it's crazy. It's crazy. I'll, I'll keep it PG, but yeah, just know it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, and just in general, yeah, they do have a preference for lighter skinned people here. So if you are lighter skinned or even white or whatever, then you put them more at ease, you know? The darker you are, the more people have their guards up a little bit here. That's, that's, that's my impression. So. Oh, wow. Mm, why, why, why is white worship such a big why, why is it such a big thing there in China? What, what's the reason for it in your opinion? Well, I think it's partly cultural. Like they have this whole you know white white whitening skin thing that they got going on here. It's partly that, but then again, just like most places in the world, it's partly uh, Western imperialism. You know, yeah. I don't want to you know, yeah. It's partly that Western imperialism. I just say that. So they get these ideas about white skin and what white people are like and you know the valuation of it and they kind of attach it to their, their 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 cultural stuff here so when they see someone white they automatically think oh rich uh class wealthy western europe great you know that's what they see and if you're a light-skinned black person they they automatically think that you're mixed or you know something like that you know uh yeah so they feel a little bit more comfortable around you. Man. And and they, they have the audacity to say we're only hiring for white teachers. And that's quite common oh, there. They they be straight up about that. Yeah, we only hire for, for Europeans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Wow. Um so